what was it like getting into this special forces world? Because you didn't join, you did, it joined you. To be honest, I had no idea. If you had asked me 20 years ago, your husband's going to be away most of the time and you're going to have two children and you're going to be raising a lot of, doing a lot of the raising on your own. I don't know what I would have decided to do, to be honest. I think I worked it out uh, over the time we've been married. I think it was over 12 years we've been apart. Mm. Within 28 years of marriage. Over there, it's kind of easy. You know when you're in threat, and it's one to five percent of the time, potentially. You know, you've got so much downtime or so much time where you're in the middle of the dash, like, not really in harm's way. But the perception is back home that every single second since you get on that plane, that you could just die. And it's, it's really quite a horrible thing to put friends and family through. He was a, a wonderful son. He was kind and compassionate. He had a wonderful sense of humour and full of fun. He just wanted to get out there and, and have fun and enjoy life. When I was injured, I remember even lying there on the stretcher and telling the Bravo who was passing the information back for the Kazavak, for the Nine Liner, that I wanted to self notify my family. I didn't want them to be notified that I'd been injured because I, I know how my, my mum is <laughs> and uh, it wouldn't go down well. Is there any chance that I can call my parents? I'm talking to Oscar that he's going to self notify. He doesn't want his parents notified. So when I called her, I basically didn't fill her in on much, much of the information. Basically, yeah, I'm in hospital. I've just got a little bit of metal in my leg, um, so it's all fine. I guess most parents have accepted this of a lot of us who are in this kind of job, that we're that kind of adventurous, that spirit, you can't really deny that. Mum's very understanding of that, so, yeah. Does she know about the close calls? She does. <laughs> um, it probably took a few rotations before I actually started telling her about them, but um, yeah, no, she, she definitely, uh, she understands. Well, my, my, uh, my father passed away uh, probably um, just before my second rotation, but um, yeah, she's, she's, she, she, she believes that, you know, he's someone that's out there looking after me, so. What about when the crash occurred? He did tell you that, I suppose. He didn't really. <laughs> he, um, he used to phone at times where he knew I wasn't at work because that's sort of the easiest time for me to be able to chat. And so it was strange for him to phone on my lunch break, but I was happy to hear from him. And so we had a quick chat and he, I said, oh, you know, how's it going? And he said, oh, I'm, oh, I'm all right. You know, what are you up to? And I said, well, I'm at work. You know, it's a strange time for you to be calling. And, um, and he said, oh yeah, I just, I just needed to chat to you. Uh, just, you know, I've had a bit of a bumpy landing. He made the decision not to tell his parents where he was going. He told us he would be going on a, on a course, on a training course, and he would be away for quite a while, and he would contact us as often as he could, but he didn't tell us where he was going. I guess I was, in retrospect, disappointed that I didn't have the opportunity to wish him well and wish him best of luck in the situation. So that, that's one part that, that really sort of still hurts and lingers. I didn't have that opportunity to actually say a proper goodbye. You get pretty skillful at organising then, don't you? You do, and I think this is um, comes back to that question about you know being married to someone in the special forces. Fundamental to this is having a routine, particularly for children. And I think the sooner you get into the routine when your spouse is deployed, you, you get into a pattern of life and you learn to cope. Conversely, you learn to cope without them. And I think that's when uh, it becomes challenging because you know you can do it all. 
You know how to take the rubbish out. You know how to change the tyre in the car. So it's, it's knowing that you can do it all yourself, but deep down you don't want to do it all yourself. How much did army training rub off on the home front? Did you learn to sort of run the house in a way that you, you'd, um, you'd operate in barracks? For me? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I think I've got OCD, I'm sure of it. You know, sort of, Definitely. You know, sort, of, mm. sort of all those times I've, you know, because I mean, with your equipment, everything's got to be right, it's got to be in a certain spot. You know, and, and that's something that's installed into you right at the very you know, sort of early stages of SAS soldiering. You know, you know this particular item goes in this pouch because if you don't need it, and if someone else in the patrol needs it, they know to know exactly where it's going to be. So I had, so I, you know, a lot of it rubbed off at home. You know, I hadn't, everything had to be in a certain spot. And obviously, Kath would be going, "What are yes. you doing?" You know? Are you very organised at home? I think I am. <laughs> I have to be organised for my work, so I, I don't know. I don't think that's come from Warren because he's no. not organised at all. I'm really messy, but for things like <laughs> timings, like I have to be on time. I just cannot early. be late to anything. I have to be there early. Mm. I'd rather walk around the block for an hour than get there late. So, and that yeah. just comes back to military training. Like, if you if you're there five minutes early, you're already late. So, that's one big that's thing. That's definitely been passed on to me. Yeah. Considering the, the absences, do you develop skills and coping strategies? Yeah, you have to. You definitely have to have your own life, your own interests um, and things that motivate you to get up and, and attack life um, because nobody likes waiting six months for life to resume again. So you have like this parallel life where you know, you've got your own things and then you have your life together. And so when the deployment's on or the exercise is on, you kind of press pause on your life together and you have your independent life and then they come back and you resume that life together. And that can take a little bit of settling in. It took Dad quite a while to get back into the, into the swing of things. At he first was... it seemed like he wasn't used to being home, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he was very out of place and he didn't really know how to fit back into the family, I guess. And at the same time, we didn't really know what to do because we hadn't seen anything he had. So we had no idea what we could do to help or make him feel more comfortable because we, at the same time, were also letting Dad back in, but he was not the same Dad we like let um, go to Afghanistan. The we are, have to we, be we hear the, the sound of the blower coming on, uh, and Straight that's just away. that's just definitely something that we've grown up with. Well, most of the time, our Ella and my rooms are clean. Uh, the house is always clean, much cleaner than any of my mates' houses. So that's definitely rubbed <laughs> off in that regard. Yeah. And and every, and exercise, always exercising, always staying fit and being ready for whatever happens. I'd been, you know, hitting the bottle well and truly by that stage, contemplating suicide. I, uh, I knew where I was going to do it and how I was going to do it. Um, there were times when my uh, my wife would, if I was at home by myself and she was out with the kids, um, she'd come home, leave the kids in the car, check around the house and the shed to see where I was and see if she needed to call somebody and she wasn't going to let the kids out of the car until she found me alive and well. And, you know, no, no person should have, to, should have to go through that. And so I fell in a heap, um, was, uh, was off work for nine months um, until I, I got myself back on track. Back on track to the point of, of being functional and, and being able to, to, to get on with life. Um, eventually got back to flying, and, uh, but only, but, but kept the secret, I was ashamed. I, I really felt like I'd felt I'd failed my country, I'd failed the army, I'd failed my family, I'd, I'd failed aviation, I'd failed my friends. And I was ashamed. I didn't know who knew, I didn't know who didn't know. We didn't socialise, we didn't go anywhere, it was to be kept a secret. Uh, what I didn't realise until mid-2015 was that the secret that we said we were keeping was actually keeping us. It's, it's fair to say that if she wasn't there, I wouldn't be here. She didn't stay with me, you know. And um, I am so, so grateful, so blessed. 
and so lucky and so much one of the very few who has a who has a loving wife and a loving partner who has stuck with me through the bad times. I, I was not a nice guy when I was when I was going through the depths. Not a nice guy at all. And um, and and the fact that she stuck with me um, is absolutely key to me still being here. Now, I haven't witnessed what Ian and his men and women have witnessed to that degree. But to understand that that's not normal, war is ugly. But through that ugliness, it's, war is also, and conflict is also about love. And this is where I think that, that growth comes from. So the, the men and women that serve together in such a high risk and intense environment and witness such trauma and grief, they are bound by love in, in the end and the love for each other and the love of life. So when they do come back home to what is normal, as long as they don't repress those feelings and they can talk about it knowing that it, that's, that's war and this is normal, then I think there's a capacity to grow from it, to not dwell on it, but to not ignore it. And I have to tell you, January the 4th, each year, the boys meet at Greg's grave and uh, with us, and we have a chat. So it still goes on and we're ne nearly nine years down the track. I, I think overall, a life that has a, a military inclusion, it, um, it opens the world up in a, in a different perspective. I think you become more aware of what happens in the world. If your husband is sent off to um, any place in the world, you wish to learn more about it. If your husband goes and, you know, puts his life on the line, you want to know what it is about. Caitlin, do you think service has been important to your family? Uh, without a doubt. Um, fundamentally, I would have been in some sort of service, I would suggest, for this, this country. Um, I believe in being a good citizen, a good member of the community. It is a natural fit. I do, I, I do wonder about the hard wiring um, to, to, to be in this sort of profession of arms, but at the same time, it's, it's worked well for Ian and I. And uh, I wouldn't have imagined 20 years ago that this would be our, our future but it's worked and I'm very proud of what we've done. I'm very proud of what he has done uh, in supporting his men and women in very difficult situations.